Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. The best way is... <laughs> <laughs> if you became a millionaire, would you keep working? You know? I want to tell you guys something. <laughs> What's going on right now is California's trying to figure out about crypto. My name is Ben. Oh, welcome to BitBoy Crypto, home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest crypto community in all of the interwebs. Today is Wednesday, October 12th. Uh, we come to you every morning, Monday through Friday. Uh, sometimes it's different people. Today it's DZ. Ben is in Dubai. Um, but don't worry, he's going to be back in the state side soon. He'll be uh, here at the end of the week. So looking forward to it. But yes, I am back. I didn't. I was a little under the weather yesterday. But, you know, they they used to call it con crud uh, or the con flu. You know, when you know this was in the before the before where sniffles and a scratchy throat was you know somewhat of a normal thing. And uh, yeah, that's what happens when I shook a lot of hands, I kissed a lot of babies. Uh, you know, uh, probably didn't have the best sleep schedule. We'll, we'll blame jet lag, not the Vegas lifestyle. But yeah, I was in the Cardano NFT con and we were doing a little coverage for NFT Alpha. And that takes us uh, to the beginning here. 20,400 subscribers. Uh, we are going to do a video. We are uploading the, uh, the footage now and expect a little vlog. So make sure you follow this channel. If you want to see what that Cardano NFT conference was like, it was pretty awesome. Met a lot of great teams. And uh, if also you want to follow me, go ahead. I am almost at 37,000, 36.9. I was in a space yesterday and I noticed uh, I got some followers. It's in a big space with some big ETH whales. I'm not going to name names. Some of them a little bit trollish. Uh, you know, they're, they're talking about the Yuga lawsuit. And we'll probably cover that a little bit later. You can see Yuga probe right there. And I, I basically, I'm, I'm going to share those thoughts, but I was running contrary to what a lot of those people were saying, and they didn't like it. They didn't like that I was dropping those knowledge bombs. A lot of them tried to come at me. You know what? I shut them down intellectually. They don't like it. So hopefully I didn't uh, burn any bridges. It's okay if you had a dumb take. I still like you. Hopefully you don't hate me for embarrassing you. All right, let's go to JPEG Junkies. This is our drop from NFT Alpha. Sold out yesterday. Uh, we launched during the con in retrospect. Probably not the best move, but you know what? As soon as we came back, we had uh, all the troops on the ground. Things really started to move. We are above mint floor, if I'm not mistaken. We are number one in trades in the last 24 hours on the entire Cardano blockchain. Over 555 trades. So the junkie fam, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you guys just maybe a little sneak peek of what we're planning. You can see us here, top three on overall volume. These people have a 5,000 Cardano floor. These people have a 2,000 Cardano floor. We only have 70. We're very affordable and we're still hanging out with the big dogs. When we are, I mean, very, this is almost, uh, what, less than 2% of the Ape Society price. So that means we got to sell 50 for every one of theirs and we're still hanging out with them uh, above floor. So if you came in and you minted, I'm glad that we were able to secure you a little bit of a bag, a little bit of a profit. So everybody who minted is up. I love to see it. If you got one of those rare ones, hold on to the one of ones. They're going to have special utility. Uh, maybe we'll do some cool stuff. But what is the JPEG Junkies? It's going to be some awesome, awesome merch that no one is doing. We want to do some really cool things that we just don't see anyone in the space doing. Kind of want to scroll down. Look at that awesome one of one. Uh, you know, hey, don't want to say who it is, but. I think you might know. Uh, here's some more of those 101s. All right, so here's an example. This is Justin's Dead Rabbit Society. JPEG Junkies has a wallet full of Cardano blue chips, and we would like to do some pretty cool Cardano-themed merch with the blue chips. So if you hold a junkie, you might be able, this is just a might, you know, this isn't set in stone. Maybe we'll do a cool kick butt 4th of July themed tank top. Maybe this rabbit's involved. Maybe you have to have a JPEG junkie to buy it. Maybe it's a token gated website. So that's kind of uh, some of our plans. And as it grows, we want to do cool things. And some ideal scenario, you know what? We're dropping free merch to all the holders because we are just generating so much income. This was a 20 something dollar mint. That doesn't mean we can just airdrop $1,000 worth of merch to everybody. But if we build something and we really grow and we really get this ecosystem growing, it can generate the revenue where we do reward our holders uh, quite handsomely. And so that's what I'm looking for. But you know what? This community uh, is just insane. So I just want to uh, give a shout out to the Junkie fam. The, I don't know. We haven't thought of a name. Maybe Junkyard? Let, let us know what we should call the, uh, the Junkie fam. I, I feel like I'm a Frankie here. You know, what are, are we the mafia? You know, are we the candlesticks? Are we the wax heads? I don't know what we are. All right. Uh, let's go to CoinMarketCap. Let's check out that uh, Bitcoin dominance. 39.8%. 
ETH down to 17.3. Gases have been a little bit higher than usual. It was up 23 Gwei. I had to do a transaction. It was like $3. I was like, what's going on? I was used to those 70 cent transactions on ETH and it felt very, very good. Uh, if we look at the charts, things are essentially just flat here. We have Bitcoin very close to just, uh, you know, sustaining the, the just a flat level 19,100 at the moment. We have Ethereum up roughly half a percent. Uh, looks like, it may, you know, Frank will uh, share some more alpha on why that is, but it looks like it was maybe getting a little oversold. This is new. Uh, dollar with no pennies. Hey, a dollar is a dollar. Uh, we have BNB down a little bit, XRP down a little bit, still up on the week. It's just been incredible uh, watching this growth over the past three, four weeks. Binance, um, you, stable coin there. Then we have ADA down uh, below 40 cents. Me and BJ were talking about like, it just seems stuck at 42, 43. And then once it fell through that, it was a quick cascade down a few pennies there. We have Solana down, uh, you know, less than 1%. Doge, uh, even though Elon's tweeting about it, still down. Maybe the power of the Elon Doge pump is, maybe those days are over. We have Dot down. Let's look at some of the top gainers and losers, though. Uh, we hit here on the 24 hours. HT, uh, Luna. Oh, God, why is Luna up? HBAR, we do like HBAR. E and S. Uh, I got, hey, I maybe have to check out my ENS. I think I got a little bag somewhere, hiding somewhere. Uh, OKB dash all up, and then very quickly goes in about the flat levels. If we look at the top losers, USTC down to, it's, it's just so weird that one coin in the ecosystem is pumping, and then you just see this one dumping. But if you look at that seven-day volume, kind of tells a tale. My, you know, this is just a guess. Blockchain detectives can do a lot better job. There are people who made profit, and maybe they're moving their profit into Terra. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that's exactly what's happening. Ape, uh, the news came out. The We're going to cover it. Yuga, under investigation. Gary Gensler's got a target on that monkey's back, down eight and a quarter percent. Uh, we have Lido Dow down. Clayton Cosmos down four percent. There is a peop, uh, reason people like to trade it. And it's those huge moves like that. When something moves, Bitcoin moves 1%, Cosmos might move 2x that, 4x that. So easy to trade if you can spot some levels. Uh, we're going to bring Frank up here. He's going to look at the trades, look at the charts, show you where things might be heading over the next couple of days. And if we look at the ultrasound money, ETH still slightly inflationary, but it's been cooling down a little bit. And I think this is, you know, that increased gas fee, meaning more people are using it. More people use it more ETH is burned. So the more ETH is used, the more deflationary it becomes here. So maybe that was, you know, that was the uh, the high point of the lull in activity. And now people are starting to make some moves again. Uh, Frankie, where's the candle man himself at? All right, we're going to pull up this Bitcoin chart. I'm seeing a lot of candles. I'm seeing a lot of lines. I'm seeing some spider lines. Tell me what I'm seeing here. What is going on, everybody? I hope you're having a good day. And actually, that reminds me of that time you said that you thought the chart looked like an oil spill. Uh, with the, <laughs> I think that was Lux Algo that was up there uh, with the reversal zones. Shout out to Lux Algo. Uh, but guys, we have a lot of good stuff to look at on the charts here today. Now we do have a new signal on the chart that is, could potentially wind up being pretty bearish. Now it's not confirmed, so you want to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt until it actually locks in. Um, but let's go ahead and jump in and see what we've got going on. Now, as you guys know, we've been looking at these higher daily timeframes as well as the weekly setting up with bullish divergences, which could indicate a big move to the upside coming here pretty soon. Now, obviously we do have a lot of macroeconomic factors at play here. We obviously have the... Uh, CPI numbers coming out, I believe, tomorrow. I think tomorrow we may see some fireworks. Now, uh, obviously, again, on those higher daily timeframes, we do have those bullish divergences forming, uh, and a lot of them are confirmed. However, uh, you know, we've been talking about on my channel a lot about we're here on the five day where we do have some bullish divergence. Uh, but if you look here at that yellow wave, that is the VWAP. And you can see that the VWAP has crossed over the zero line right here, that white dotted line, and it is immediately crossing back down. Uh, we've been calling this the VWAP flop. Now, uh, the reason this is a little bit alarming to me is because if that, uh, if we do confirm 
another candle here and that VWAP crosses back over, it will uh, essentially invalidate the uh, previous green dot, right? Uh, and that obviously puts our divergence at risk. And uh, you could see if you come down to the four day, it's kind of similar to what has happened. We had a little bit more movement to the upside on the VWAP on the four day, uh, but we kind of just came up and came right back down. Uh, you know, having that divergence not really give us much oomph, right? Like we just got these little three green candles uh, and then now we're just on our way back down. Now, this is somewhat bearish in my opinion, but again, you want to realize that we have a lot of things at play here uh, that are not on the charts, right? So I do think we could see a little bit of weird price action here. Uh, we might be seeing, you know, the bullish things get invalidated shortly before just getting revalidated, if that makes any sense. But the reason that this actually has me a bit nervous is not only are you having that VWAP just flipping right back around and printing that red dot right after the green one, uh, but if we come up here and turn off, turn on Market Cipher B, you will see that we are printing another yellow X here on the four day. Uh, now this is not gonna confirm for another three uh, three days and nine hours. Uh, so, you know, who knows? If tomorrow we get that those CPI numbers and things wind up being a little better than we think, um, we could see this actually go away. Uh, but as of right now, it actually is not looking too good. Uh, you know, again, just because those VWAPs are coming up over that zero line and flopping right back over is kind of showing that the buying pressure is not that strong or at least not as strong as the selling pressure. So uh, this is that bear signal. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is with the yellow X's, typically what you see is the first yellow X will bring you down a lot. That second yellow X typically does bring you down a lot as well. Uh, and then once you start getting that third, fourth, or fifth, uh, yellow X, that actually starts to indicate seller exhaustion. And actually, if we zoom out a little bit uh, and come to the 2018 bear market, you can actually see that uh, these yellow X's actually, uh, you know, this yellow X here in 2018 actually popped up after the bottom was already in. So it, it's not just, you know, you see the yellow X and it's automatically doom and gloom. You want to be aware of it because it can turn out to be pretty bad. But, uh, you know, seeing these on the four day time frame actually popping up after the bottom was in in 2018, Makes me feel a little bit better, uh, but definitely going to be keeping a close, close eye on it. And again, at this point, guys, I know there's a lot of indecision in the market. Uh, you know, at, at this point, I think the, the CPI data that we get tomorrow is really going to help decide which way we go here. Again, if price, uh, if these numbers come out a little bit better than we were expecting, uh, or if they come out anything less than tragic, I do think that the higher time frames are still set up in those bullish patterns. However, with the VWAP flop, nothing is confirmed just yet on the time frames we just looked at. Uh, but you know, uh, if we confirm this red dot on the four day and that yellow X and uh, the CPI numbers bring us down, uh, we could start confirming these red dots, which would be a much, much worse look. Uh, but coming down to the lower, uh, lower time frames here, you do have a red dot looking to print here on the four hour coming up pretty soon. You can see that VWAP coming down towards that zero line. Uh, so I do think we, uh, let me turn on our TA here so we can kind of look at the levels. Uh, now, you can see we were watching this level here at about 18,825. Uh, and we were expecting price to come down here, right? Because once we lost our point of control all the way back here, uh, we were expecting price to come down to those range lows. Now, uh, this is, I'm not getting overly bearish right now because we are at key support, right? So you don't want to get overly bearish at support. You don't want to short into support. Um, so you do want to be careful, but it does look like we could potentially just kind of range around, uh, for just a little bit. I really do again, think that the fireworks are probably going to start tomorrow with the CPI data. Uh, but the levels remain the same guys that 18, 825 level is that key level we're watching. Uh, and then you also want to realize that another important level, if we do wind up getting a little bit of a dump here uh, tomorrow on the CPI data. Uh, the most important level that I am watching, guys, is that 786 FIB level at about 17,600, which is essentially where we bottomed out uh, on that previous low at 17,600. Uh, but this, hopefully, if we do get a, a dump off those CPI numbers, that is the major, major, major level I'm looking at. If we lose this level, there's really not much below us until that 12 to 14K level. So although there is a lot of indecision in the market right now, guys, I do think we're going to start to see some answers come in uh, hopefully tomorrow, 
Hopefully, it's positive. Again, those higher time frames are set up for, uh, you know, maybe that positive news is the catalyst we need to kind of, uh, you know, get those higher time frames to start and start to play out and maybe, maybe even invalidate that yellow X. Uh, and then on the SPY, not too much to look at here. Uh, you know, kind of the same deal sitting at support here. Uh, money flow and momentum starting to come up on your four hour. Uh, and then again, even on the SPY, that weekly bullish divergence, uh, again, a high time frame that could be ready to move to the upside. Uh, but your caveat here is that money flow is looking pretty ugly. So again, I think tomorrow is going to be the day where we really figure out which way this market is going to go. And, uh, you know, although we have the four-day yellow X, you know, just with the way the longer time frames look, again, all it takes is a little bit of positive news or just bad news that's not that bad that could wind up flipping us bullish. But again, with that news, it is, uh, you know, things can go either way. So be very careful if you're trading tomorrow. Make sure you have your tight stop losses. I am still short. Um, let me zoom in here a little bit. I am still short from about uh 19 somewhere i think i'm short from about 198 so yeah somewhere up here i'm still short from over here i've taken profits uh twice uh took profits when we came down here yesterday and then i took a little bit more profit last night uh before i went to bed but i'm going to hold the rest of that short let it ride and then i am looking for some clear sh uh long uh long signals or confirmations to potentially get into a long trade that way i'll be a little bit hedged tomorrow uh and then you know if we wind up dumping that short will continue to pay out and if we flip bullish i will get stopped out of my short in profit uh again already took profit a bunch of profit on that trade so uh kind of a win-win uh shout out to jason casper he calls that schlonging uh but with all that being said guys i think that's all i got uh back to uh good old dz who missed dz let us know in chat shout out to dz we missed you i missed you thank you for being back bing bong that, that's a note I come back to. All right, it's called what again? What, was, what did just Jason Casper call it? All right, uh, real quick, I, I just wanted to share this. This floor actually turned into lava while we were here, and I think the floor flipped above 80. You guys are maniacs. We are already up at 84. Jeez, Christ. If you guys just would have jumped in right then, you're in profit. Uh, yeah, let's see. Seconds ago, minute ago, three minutes ago, three, seven, a minute. This is when you know things are popping. When you see seven minutes above a minute, that means there's so many transactions Every now and then one takes a while. Uh, maybe two people try to buy it really, really close together. So, uh, Junkie Fam, you guys are crazy, and I love it, and I'm here for it. Let's talk about some, oh, I know what we're about to talk about. About to talk about that, bzz, that Twitter buzz. We're not talking about Elon, whether or not he's going to buy it at 5420.69 pennies. I don't know, but uh, I think we got uh, some Twitter buzz we're going to share. All right, what do we got here? First one from Frankie Candles. Oh, wait, no. Breaking market news. In the face of a PC sector slowdown, Intel plans to lay off thousands of workers. I have been talking about the tech sector being the catalyst for these layoffs. You can see it happening now. We're seeing it with Facebook. We're seeing it with Google. We're seeing it with, the, or I'm sorry, Meta. Now we're seeing it with the, the hardware components of this industry. We knew this was going to happen. The, the writing's on the wall. And I heard someone bring up a good point. Google, long time ago, they basically created a, a moat. And what they did for their strategy of acquiring the best talent was overpay where everybody would just go work at Google. Well, guess what? Other companies followed suit. And then you had every big tech company would just overpay and they would attract the best talent. Well, guess what? It went on too long. Too many companies did it. And now they're realizing like, oh, you know what? Maybe that guy that's phoning in his work, doing eight hours a week, Maybe we shouldn't be paying them $260,000 a year with stock options. And I think uh, some of these companies, they're, they're trimming the fat. I think a lot of people got fat off uh, the slaughter here. And now it's time to uh, maybe tighten some belt strings here. So Intel, if anyone you know is affected, we, we hate to hear it. All right. Uh, Watcher Guru Crypto.com announces Paris, France as its new European regional headquarters. This makes me think they're talking to high level people. And maybe France is going to lead the way when it comes to the EU's adoption of cryptocurrency. Drew, what do you think about that narrative? Do you think that's a possibility? Do you think maybe France is more forward thinking? Macron is more forward thinking than uh, his contemporaries? You know, I think that they're in a situation where they might have to speed up that adoption. Um, they have a little bit more of a mm. uh, more turmoil going on in Western Europe than the U.S. does. So. We can kind of take our sweet time um, in these, but I think that France is a position to actually adopt much faster than the United States, right? Oh, now. yeah, yeah, I would say as well. And not only that, they don't have uh, such 
large pockets of people controlling, uh, you know, the, the moves that be. And so they don't have as many influential billionaires controlling the narrative, I, I would think. I mean, I, I know they have people, you know, the, the wealthier kind of controlling things. It, it probably most every country in the on the globe, but I think it's probably pretty bad where uh, we're staying at here. All right. I think we got what one or two more here. One more. All right. Let's see. That was the Watcher Guru. Next one here. It's okay. It's okay. We got a little, uh, we got a training sesh happening right now behind the board. It's okay. He's hitting the button. We got BJ on the ones and twos. And don't worry if anyone can help us, it's Biscuit Jesus. All right. Unusual whales. U.S. should pump more oil to avert war level energy crisis, Jamie Dimon has said. Of course, the uh, CEO of JP Morgan there. Now, Anything Jamie Dimon says, I have a hard time taking at face value. Always kind of look at it from a, like a game theory optimal, uh, you know, narrative. Like, what is the absolute highest GTO? Uh, you know, I want to say end result you're looking for here. And I kind of want to say it's like for oil stocks. I don't. Maybe I'm just jaded. Maybe Jamin's, Jamie's like one of the nicest guys, and he would never. I, I can't say this with a straight face. Maybe he is just a nice guy who just would never say anything to influence a market or influence his bag. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, when I, I read that, I just try to see through the lines there. And, yeah, I, I think there's maybe a, we got some longs on some oil companies. What, what would you say? I, I do think he loves America. You know, I, I, I've heard him speak many, many times on the business channels. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, he's, he's a huge capital allocator. And I, I think that's at the forefront of uh, his decisions. And that's okay. That's okay. You don't you don't make it to where you're at at that level unless you do that. All right. I think we're going to uh, talk a little Bitcoin here. And let's talk about these whales. Uh, looks like we got some blue whales. Uh, Bitcoin whales withdrawing 15,000 Bitcoin from exchanges recently. And this is the highest since June. We're going back four months. June, July, August, September. And then if we count October is going into the fifth month. All right, Bitcoin whales net flows registered negative values recently, and uh, this is from Glassnode, and the whale withdrawal volumes have been rising in the last few weeks. The whale net flow, they like to call it. Here's a chart that shows the trend in the Bitcoin whale net flows over the last couple of years. Uh, so on the downward side, this is going to be them withdrawing. On the upside, this is going to be them depositing. Obviously, when whales are dumping their Bitcoin, you can kind of expect a crash. This is the May crash. I uh, believe it was our homie, Crypto Face, who said, sell in May, walk away. You can see the people right here at the beginning of May. They start selling. Boom. You know, we get that big dump right here. Massive buying opportunity. They bought a whole bunch. But you know what? They weren't believers because they immediately went from massive amounts of uh, or drops there to, uh, yeah, huge, huge uptick in uh, withdrawals right there. Boom. Uh, pulling, Dumping it all. Uh, there we go. Went up again. Huge uptick in withdrawals here. Now, it's it's hard to see what sometimes these people are spot on with what's going to happen right here. You could see, for example, you know, they're dumping right before it uh, dumps here. But then sometimes they dump and then it goes up. And so we're going to just have to see what happens here. Um, here you could just see a massive like just uptick in uh, deposits right there. I mean, uh, in withdrawals right there, deposits into their own wallets. And we're seeing it again. Now, what's going to happen with the price? I mean, there's no real strong correlation. Um, you know, it's, it seems pretty close to 0.5 almost. So we're, we're just going to have to wait and see. I mean, you can see the whales don't always get it right. But if you're going to swim with people, you definitely want to swim with the whales, not the guppies, not the minnows, not with the deezies. All right. The last time such large red net flows were seen uh, was right after the Bitcoin crashed down from 30 to around 20, implying that whales may have accumulated thinking the price then to be the bottom. I know I was in the camp. Hit that like button if you thought, I thought 28.5 was the bottom. I really thought 28.5 was the bottom. And then I was just shocked how quickly it went down. And uh, oh, sweet, sweet summer child. Act like it was, uh, act like you've been through a bull run before. Act like you've been through a bear market. All right, Bitcoin supply in profit continues to decline, but still not at the, the historical bottom zone. Uh, this is also data from Glassnode. And here's a chart that shows the seven day Moving average percent supply in profit since the January 2014. Now, this is uh, the amount of coins that basically are trading above, or I'm sorry, uh, the price that they got at is below what we're currently trading at. So at an all-time high, 100% of people are going to be in profit. Uh, you can see it right here. So at all-time high, technically, by definition, everyone is in a profit. Uh, even no matter how low we go, Satoshi's wallet will still be in profit. I mean, the, the fraction of a penny he got it at, it can never really hit that. 
Uh, so right now, not many people are in profit. So we are hitting these lows. The COVID crash got below this line. 2018-2019 uh, bear market got below this line. 2014-2015 bear market got below this line. Will we continue to go below the line? I don't know. I'm going to paint a rosy picture for you. Who wants a little dose of hopium? Here you can see a decent uh, amount of time in below uh, profit. Now, not the entire time. You see little blips above. But all right, so this is July. So let's just say roughly July 14th, January 15th, six months, six months at, or three months after July, we're looking at around October. So from October to almost October, we had people, almost a whole year, we had people dipping into uh, decline here, no longer in profit. Here, you see that time frame shrink, shrink considerably. Here, you see it, it's barely lasted at all. And then here, we didn't even hit it. Now, is this smart people using Glassnode? maybe front running the market. I sure hope so, because if that happens, that means this was capitulation. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying if this trend continues, this would suggest that uh, capitulation is over. Uh, just saying if the trend continues. Me, I lean uh, optimistic though. All right. The indicator's value was around 40, 50, uh, 41% 2014, 40, 42% 2018. And uh, COVID crash we saw reach 47%. But right now we're only hitting around 50%. So we're hitting some pretty good levels. So right around 50%. This is we're half. Uh, so yeah, maybe, maybe those days are over. Who knows? Who knows? I, I would certainly like to see it. What are the odds we never go below 50% again, Drew? Do you think it's a possibility? I mean, all bets are off right now. Uh, having price predictions with, I mean, so you're saying the macro is too uncertain at the moment? Yeah, like we could. We're one week of bad news. Uh, from the IMF or various central banks that could s easily send this thing to 10. Logically speaking, I, I mean, I feel like this amount of time at this price level is painting a pretty, pretty baseline picture for where we are and a short term dip down and then back up doesn't sound unreasonable. To me. Yeah, but I do want to share the other side of the narrative. Uh, I'm just going to share crypto savvy. He uh, tweeted this out. Uh, he's still calling for three K and he has the, uh, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. This is the dot-com bubble crash. And he's saying, you know, if you look, there's a lot of similarities in these two charts. I don't uh, think it's going this low, but he's still sticking by 3,300. So uh, shout out to Crypto Savvy. He doesn't care. He's still going to say, I think it's going low. You come at me, haters. Uh, you know what? If it does go that low, we're all going to look at him like a savior here. All right. Uh, let's, you know, speak it to your point. You were saying we're one week of bad news. Bitcoin price predictions as recessions fears rise. Can Bitcoin reach 100K after the bear market? Concern about a recession among investors is comparable to that voice in 2020 when 75% expressed concern about a downturn at the height of the pandemic. Investor confidence in the 12 months has dropped from 49% a year ago, dropping, plummeting, I would almost say, 10 points to 39%. Equally dismal, financial advisors and experts' op optimism is also down as 48% down 15% from 2021. And while 54% of investors anticipate greater volatility in the next 12 months, their fear of a recession now 20% higher. Uh, IMF downgrades economic projections. Uh, they lower their projections for global economic output in 2023, or the growth, I mean, citing the protracted war with Ukraine, widespread inflationary pressures, and increased interest rates that increase borrowing rates for business and consumers as reasons. Uh, this is essentially uh, a smart way of saying our growing debt bubble. So we have this growing debt bubble and people are trying to monetize the debt a little bit more and it's going to lead to a squeeze, might not be great. And according to the forecast, more than a third of the world's economy will experience two consecutive quarters of negative growth in the coming year. U.S. and China, the world's two largest economies, are both experiencing sluggish growth and major European economies are also encountering economic headwinds. So yeah, there's a lot of bad things uh, looming out there. I don't want to get uh, tied into the, uh, the the war, of course, but you know, there's a lot of uh, downside risk that is uh, associated with that. You know, if, if you want to look at the SEC case, like, oh my God, look at the risk. What if SEC wins? What's going to happen to uh, XRP? It's going to plummet. Well, you know, it is game theory. It's escalatory. I mean, again, I don't, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into it. Let's just say there's some people who have less to lose. And just for an example, if there's a fight on the playground and there's two kids fighting, the small kid is more likely to pick up the stick. 
And so the weaker opponent is more likely to escalate. It's called escalatory dominance. Um, again, I'm probably, I'm probably saying too much here. I, the people, they're not going to want me to say what I'm going to say. So some of y'all probably know where I'm heading with this. All right, let's uh, talk about wholesale prices. Uh, this is also in line with the inflation risks here. Rose 0.4% in September, more than expected as inflation persists. Wholesale prices rose more than expected despite Federal Reserve efforts to control inflation. And of course, this is from uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Wednesday's data shows that the Fed still has work to do. Indeed, the Cleveland Fed president, uh, there's there's different uh, sections. There's one in Cleveland. I think there's one in Texas. So this is the Cleveland Fed president. Mester on Tuesday said, there's been no progress on inflation. BJ Drew, how would you like the last name Mester? We love our Mesters. I'm not making fun of any Mesters here. We love our Mesters. Uh, it's, it's just up there with the first name Chester. It's it's unfortunate. It is it's a strong showing. It's a very strong name. It just it rhymes with the bad stuff, you know what I mean? Like you don't you don't want that name, you know, especially when there's shows like Dahmer are trending, you know. They're yeah. gonna look at you a little they're you know, it's gonna rhyme. That's all I'm gonna say. There will yeah, be Yeah, that's that's where they're gonna go with it. Yeah, yeah. Chester the impressor. Oh my god, I'm just so impressed when he enters the room, he just commands the attention. And you know what? He can cook a good meal. Uh I had his ham hocks and uh it was gamey. It was just a little gamey. All right, U.S. mortgage interest rates rise to the highest level since 2006. All right, let me derail it a little bit. I don't know if y'all guys have seen the TikToks where they make fun of uh, Dahmer. Again, we don't want to make fun of make light of the uh, victims, but I think it's it's okay to kind of poke fun at a uh, some evil human being. He was an evil human being. It's you go to his house for a drink and you open his fridge, like, hey yeah. man, what's what's up with all these butt cheeks in your fridge? But I don't. Know, I, I'm sure. I'm sure not everyone opened the fridge. I'm sure if you went to go get ice cubes, he he stopped you. You know, oh, no, 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 I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. <laughs> Why are you so panicky all of a sudden? I'm uncomfortable. Why and, do you always the music yeah, the A minor music that he's always playing in the background is very, very unsettling. He, he was feeling those jams. All right, uh, U.S. I mean, I thought it was because he's autistic. I don't know. All right, U.S. mortgage interest rates rise to the highest level since 2006. Very tough for new people to uh, get a home loan at these rates. The average interest rate on the most popular U.S. home loan rose to its highest level in 16 years as the housing sector continues to bear the brunt of financial, financial, uh, tightening financial conditions. Data from Mortgage Bankers Association here. The average contract rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage rose by six basis points to 6.81% for the week. Uh, and while the market composite index fell 2% from a week earlier and is down roughly 69% from one year ago, uh, home building and sales have weakened significantly in recent months with home resales posting seven straight months of decline. However, home prices remain high even as house price growth slows, eroding affordability for buyers who are still competing due to a shortage of properties for sale. And you know what this means? More and more renters every quarter uh, going in line with the, the narrative that you will own nothing and be happy. Now, I'm not saying this is some grand conspiracy trying to make that happen, but I will say this. If people in your area are fighting new housing, ask yourself the motive. You know, that's all I'm saying. Uh, more apartment complexes increases the amount of renters, but that would decrease the rental pressure on homes, which would lead to more affordability. And so you're, you're getting a lot of evil people co-oping. Hey, no, no, we don't want this. Oh, no, no, this housing is uh, it's going to be slumlords. And this is bad because it's all slumlords. And this is, you know, it's not green enough or it shouldn't be here or it's, it's, it's in a food desert. Or, you know, they, they'll always come up with all these reasons why you shouldn't build housing. We need more housing. We need more housing. I know, oh, there's so much land in America. No one wants to live in the middle of Kansas. We love our people in Kansas. We love our, how do you say it? Kans Kansians? How do you say it? BJ, you got to know. How do you say it? you're from Can Kansians? That Kansians just sound sounds right. reasonable. I don't know. We love our people from Kansas, but you know what I'm saying? Those rural, rural, middle of boom F, you know what I'm talking about? People don't really, uh, <laughs> let me know in the chat. How do you say it? Uh, so we do need housing. Um, there's something about, you know, a highway grid, getting food to be, you know, in a perfect world. Yeah, we're all living in the middle of Mon We all have, you know, all the land in the our eyes could see and we grow our own food and we're shooting deer and we have venison strips and you know everything's sustainable but that's just not reality reality is people like to live near the water 
People like to live in big cities. And because of that, we do have a terrible housing crisis. So I just, I just wanted to share that. All right, uh, just, just be wary if they're, they're fighting building where you live. All right, why the SEC is after Yuga Labs and what it means for NFTs. This is uh, the space I was alluding to. I'm not going to name names, but I was basically bringing a lot of bad news. They were saying, we're fine. Ape coins like Bitcoin, uh, you know, don't worry to the moon. No, maybe we should worry. Um, let's break down uh, what is this article saying here. And what will be seen as a major escalation in its crypto enforcement agenda? SEC is investigating Yuga Labs, uh, of course, the makers of Board Ape Yacht Club. Uh, crypto briefings take. Now that the SEC is investigating Yuga Labs, it's clear that the NFT space is within the regulatory's crosshairs next. This should give anyone making their living off of NFTs in any capacity cause for concern. It would not be surprising for today's news to discourage any number of aspiring projects from launching, lest they be brought under punitive scrutiny. Uh, but again, it must be re uh, restated that they have not accused Yuga Labs of any wrongdoing. And at this point, there's no evidence that charges are imminent. Still, the news is making people nervous. This is, uh, you know, just nothing's been confirmed. There are no charges. But here's the issue. It isn't the Bored Ape. It isn't the Mutant Ape. It isn't the Kennel. It isn't the other deed. It's ApeCoin. It's ApeCoin. And this is what I was expressing in that space is people are saying it's fine. I got my ApeCoin for free. I don't have to worry, right? We don't have to worry. Well, ApeCoin has a, a big wheel. It's, it's a pie chart. And they say 100% of the funds and they break down where it's going, you know, what people raise money for uh, liquidity providers. They raise money to own a portion of Yuga. And then Yuga spent that money and they, you know, they acquired CryptoPunks and they're building out and they, they brought Little Wayne to ApeFest. You know, they're, they're spending the money, in my opinion, pretty uh, intelligently. However, some of that money uh, was then paid out in the form of ApeCoin. Some of these people got ApeCoin allotments. Check, I don't know the math. I haven't looked at that chart in a long, long time, but there were people who made investments who got ApeCoin allotments or allocations. I don't even know if they've got it yet. I think it's delayed. How I think that's what they're coming after them for. They gave people who gave money to Yuga, they got ApeCoin allotments. Again, I mean, double check everything here, but you have to check. They may not even have got it yet, uh, but check that pie chart and see who's getting what. That's where I think it came from. DZ taking the deliverance canoe trip. What are you talking about? No, I, if I hear banjos down the creek, I'm pulling, I'm pulling the canoe off the water and I'm just beelining. I don't know what direction. I'm, I'm just running in a straight direction. You hear banjos, you keep it moving. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, Meta. Speaking of uh, <laughs> the Yuga probe, did, did we have to go with probe there? JPEG junkies should be called the Fiend Team. Fiend Team. Fiend team. The fiend team. I don't know. I might I might just like the junkies. The junkies. I don't know. Fiend team. I, I, I'll, I'll roll it around. I'll, I'll, I'll wear it for a while. We'll see what we think. All right. Microsoft and Meta Partnership brings Office 365 apps to the Metaverse. This is actually the most bullish thing I've seen for the Metaverse. I've long said Metaverse isn't going to be, oh, we're you know all hanging out. You know We're playing virtual basketball. It's going to be office meetings. It's going to be boring meetings. And if you can use Excel... And you can use, you know, Word or Sheets or any of these things. That's pretty cool if you could do it with a Google Goggles uh, style thing. It'd have to be like the Ray-Bans, not the giant, uh, you know, bulky head or headwear. Uh, they partnered with Microsoft to bring a range of products into their VR platform, aiming to entice companies into working in virtual environments. Uh, Meta's betting on the Pro uh, headset, packed with new features, will tempt users into a virtual workday. Company claims the new equipment is more comfortable, has better performance, and improved clarity with higher resolution over its existing headset. Uh, has it come cheap with the company's research R&D arm? Reality Labs burnt through billions of dollars to put forward the hardware and virtual worlds required, spending $5.7 billion alone so far in 2022. Not only that, they bought the company, Oculus, from, uh, I blank on his name right now, the younger guy, he's doing Defense Department stuff now. But yeah, they, they had to buy that company too, and I think that was over a billion dollars. This is quite huge. I think using this is going to be um, pretty massive. I don't think this would take off with the Quest Pro. I think this would take off once they finally get it down small enough where it's just like a pair of Ray-Bans. And yeah, you're just sitting and you've got your Ray-Bans on. You're sitting at your couch at home and you're in the boardroom meeting. You're looking at other people sitting around you. That's going to be cool. How far away are we from that? I, I don't know what, the, you know what Moore's Law is capping out at. It's capping out on certain things, but five years, 10 years, 20 years, somewhere around there. Years from now, this will be huge. When it comes to the Quest Pro, 
it's like Elon said, weren't we told as children to not sit close to the television? Right? Don't you remember that? And if you look, a lot of people got eye problems. A lot of the younger people, you know, staring at the phones. How can having a screen this close to your eyeballs be good? We were told not to sit close to the TV, but two inches away? Like, I don't know. I mean, BJ, you're basically a medical doctor. Is there any? It's exactly that, that I think one of the coolest things is for medical training and pseudo hands-on training of anything else. But there was a company that I was attempting to work with that uh, specifically allowed people to be in operating rooms. And yeah, th- and that's cool. Bodies. But I mean, I mean, sports more specifically, like you sit down and you want to watch two Harry Potter movies that's six hours. Should you be 10 feet from your TV? Is that better for your eyes than having it two inches from your eyes? I want to say sitting 10 feet from your TV is vastly superior for your eye health. Yeah. And trust me, I used to get needles stuck in my eyes. The the OG Bit Squad members, uh, they remember. Uh, all right. Member Bears. All right. Meta CEO, just real quick. The, he did debut the Pro VR headset. It's going to cost $1,500. Here is a jellyfish. Oh, no, wait, that's it right there. Uh, so this is their new mixed reality headset. Looks pretty cool. I do think um, it's going to be probably a lot more comfortable. I'm, I'm sure that the R&D, the billions, it's got to be going somewhere. I do have an Oculus. I love Super Hot. If you're looking for a cool game, Super Hot is uh, one of my favorites. Creed, uh, pretty decent. I can't handle the ones where you move around. I get a little motion sick. All right, let's talk about Solana here. Uh, no, they didn't have an off switch again. No, this is a, this is a mango market hack. The TVL tanks 23% following this $100 million hack. The hacker wants mango market to use the $70 million in its treasury to repay the bad debts. Uh, the decentralized protocol has sent the value of its native token, Mango, not the uh, famous character from Saturday Night Live, and that of Soul spiraling down over the last 24 hours. I say Soul went down more because of Bitcoin than this uh, hack. Solana people don't care when it goes down, so why would they care about a hack, right? Uh, Mango Market stated that the hacker manipulated their value by taking an outsized position of a trading pair and counter-traded themselves with another account. This led to the USD value rising on various exchanges. So it looked like he used a, a, a low liquidity trading pair and basically arbitrage his way to success here. The hacker has released his terms for returning the funds through a sub, uh, proposal submitted to the Dow. He wants them to use that $70 million to pay back some uh, people here. And they said their primary focus is to prevent further losses, ensure depositors are made whole, and salvage some value for the protocol. Now, if it was decentralized, how would it do all that? So this is where uh, the more decentralized you are, the more hectic it can be. Because if you've ever been in a, a Discord room, people can argue about like what color, what, what size light bulbs we're going to put in the office. So, I mean, when it comes to really crazy uh, uh, topics, it can, it, can, it can end up taking too long to get things done. And sometimes you just need, you know, uh, an Eisenhower, like some sort of wartime general just coming through and be like, no, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, and just execute. Uh, but, you know, if it's Dow, Comedy, oh, this guy's asleep, oh, we got, you know, it's kind of when they make fun of uh, Solana goes down and they turn on with like a Discord room. All right, Judge Grant's amicus request to support Ripple in lawsuit with the SEC. Uh, Taurus of uh, D- Southern District of New York has granted, I remit, and Tapjet's request to file these briefs in support of Ripple Labs following a rejection of objection of the Securities Exchange Commission. We've talked about this. This is basically just uh, the, the Ripple, the, the the Ripple people. They're coming They're coming to the Ripple's defense here. And uh, you know what? The SEC, they said, no, no, we don't want them helping. No, we don't need these people. We don't need to hear from them. And Ripple said, yeah, we do. They got some good things to say. And the judge said, you know what? We are going to let them say it. So just another small victory for Ripple there. And uh, the boss tips when the SEC case will end. And then, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a uh, FUD with Hoskinson coming in. Uh, he had a couple, he had a very vocal minority come after him. And it was, it was sad to see. I'm more of a uh, and blockchain person, not a or blockchain. And that was another source of contention with my spaces yesterday. I, I do want, you know, speaking of Cardano NFTs, I, I go in this huge space with huge people in the ETH world. Huge, I'm not going to, again, name names, but these people are much, much bigger than me. And they, they came and they just attacked me out the, out the get-go. They're like, so how do you reconcile, you know, you have BTC and your name's .eth, but, you know, you just like pivoted and just turned your back on all that. Now you just talk Cardano, man. What gives? You know, so negative. The framing was just so negative. I, I was just like, I, I just disagree with this whole narrative. It's not an or. 
you know, I, I can, I'm in Cardano or Ethereum. No, I'm in Cardano and Ethereum and unfortunately Solana. I, there's some great project on Solana. And, you know, I, I have some other NFTs too. I have Wax and you know, I have a VV and I'm, I'm an and person, not an or person. In the blockchain space, we need more and people. Too much of this infighting, you know, separate your feelings of XRP and its tech and you can hate it. You could say, man, it's old JavaScript bull crap. You know, it's so old, so ancient. You know, it's basically PayPal. You can hate it, but you can still support Ripple and what they're doing in their fight against the SEC. Cardano, you can hate Cardano for some reason. I don't know why people hate it, but some people, they just seem to hate it and they make fun of it all the time. But you can still, you know, root for Charles Hoskinson when he's speaking in front of the Senate. You can hate how slow Bitcoin is and how, you know, the transactions take forever and it's so expensive and 10 minute block times. But you still root for Satoshi's vision. And that's, the, that's the, the message that I want to impart here. Let's be and this blockchain and that blockchain, not or blockchain. There's too much of that, too much infighting. Let's just all grow together. Let's all work together. Let's all build together. And that's my final message. JPEG junkies, Pluto Alliance. I love you guys. Easy out.